Hello and welcome. My name is Chris. This is the academyofworship.org YouTube channel, and today we're talking about bass. Now, a couple of disclaimers for this video. This is intended for audiences of people who are just starting out on bass, or maybe they're interested in transitioning to bass from another stringed instrument, say a guitar, and they want to start understanding what makes a bass work in a band setting. So we're going to be discussing very basic things. I know I just said a lot of bass in that. Basic, yeah, that's all I got. I'm not a bass player. I don't pretend to be a bass player, but I can play bass. So please don't look at what I'm doing as a technique to learn or that I should be the example of how to play bass. This is more of a how the bass works with drums and establishes groove and that kind of thing. It'd be best if you had headphones on for this or a good pair of speakers that you're listening through. Uh, the bass frequencies don't come out great on, say, laptop speakers or phone speakers, so these examples that I'm going to be showing you, they may not translate well to those kinds of devices. Today we're going to be talking about how the bass and the drums work together. So the only two instruments you're going to hear today are bass and drums. In the first example, I'll be demonstrating how the kick drum, which is the low drum that sits on the floor in front of the drummer, in case you didn't know, works really well with the bass, specifically how they play at the same time, and the bass isn't really doing anything else. The second example you're gonna hear is how the bass can do something different from the drums, but still set up a groove. What is groove? Well, the groove can be described in a lot of different ways, but generally it's the way that you feel the music. It's the way that the beat moves and the way that the bass is interacting with that beat, or usually drums, but a lot of times augs percussion or things like that. In modern worship music and modern rock music, the bass and drums are locked together in a lot of ways. And without those two working in tandem, without them pushing and pulling each other and working off of each other, that groove we're talking about just doesn't get set up. And the guitars can do whatever they want, the keyboardists can do whatever they want, the vocalists can do whatever they want, and that groove just won't be there if the bass and the drums aren't locked in. In this first example, it's the bass and the drums working together really well. They're very tight. The kick drum plays, and the bass plays. When the kick drum isn't playing, the bass generally isn't playing. I think there's two notes that play when the kick isn't actually hitting. But you'll notice there's a lot of space. Let's take a listen and see what it sounds like, then we'll chat about it. First though, let's listen to the drum pattern and the kick pattern specifically to hear what it's doing so that we know what kind of bass we can put over it. Check it out. You'll notice that the kick drum pattern has a lot of space in it. There's a huge gap actually where nothing's happening except for like hi-hat and snare. Well, that's up to the bass player to determine what to play over that or what not to play. So in a piece like this where there's just a lot of space and you wanna set up kind of a dance groove where the kick and the bass are playing together, but then there's space for maybe other instruments to fill in, you get a really classic dance bass drums vibe happening. Check it out. So I'm sure in that example, you could hear how the kick and the bass were playing together. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of space between when the bass plays. Now this kind of groove is specific to a song, and honestly, it's on a per song basis that you're gonna have to make that judgment call. Because sometimes you don't want the bass to play exactly when the kick drum plays, or at least only to play when the kick drum plays. It sets up a very specific kind of groove. A lot of times in dance music and things where you have that kind of groove where you want people's body to move or you want people to feel the impact of the kick and the bass is when you'd use that sort of technique. So in the music that you're playing, see if maybe a song lends itself really well to listening to what the kick is doing. So the second example is a little more straightforward or straight ahead, meaning that the bass actually plays all the way through it. Um, it's a very straight groove, meaning the drums are playing a straight beat. There's not a whole lot of space between drum hits, so the kicks and the snares and the hi-hats and everything else going on, so that the drums are kind of consistent throughout the piece. And that allows the bass player to do a little bit more, so you're not necessarily listening to what the kick drum is doing and only playing what the kick drum is doing. You're actually driving forward the groove of the song, and you want to just lay down that bedrock of a solid bass line to let other instruments, again, kind of sit on top of that. So first let's take a listen to the drum groove and then we'll see what we can do with the bass.
Now you'll notice in that example, the bass didn't stop playing. There was consistent driving bass uh, underneath or with the drums the entire time. Now this type of groove works really, really good on songs that might have a faster tempo or the intention of the song has a bit more drive to it, more rock and roll than maybe the previous example where it was more of a dance groove or kind of wanted to make you move in a different way or think or feel in a different way. Well, that's pretty much it. I didn't want to cover too much with the bass, especially for those that are just starting out on bass or uh, have an interest in bass, just to give you an idea of kind of where the bass sits in a band setting. Please like the video if you got something out of it. If you want to share it, that'd be awesome as well. And if this kind of content is helpful for you, then I'd hope you consider subscribing to the channel. That really does help us out. And I really appreciate all of you that stop by and check all this stuff out. But until next time, go twist some knobs, flip some switches, and I'll see you in the next one.